Hello again. Um, today we're having another look at the assembly language version of the 3D10 print program. And just when you thought I couldn't milk that anymore, a new version of the uh, PyTube Direct software landed, the uh, Indigo release, or at least an alpha of it, and I'm running the alpha 4 release. Um, and this implements a new processor type, which is processor type 23, that's the uh, RISC-V. Now the RISC-V, if you don't know what it is, is an open instruction set architecture um, processor. Now this is not actually a processor itself, but instead it's a specification for um, a processor in terms of what instructions it has, what registers it has, how the instructions are encoded. And that specification is freely usable by anybody without paying a license fee to go away and build your own processor that implements it. And what you've got in the PyTube Direct is a software implementation of the RISC-V processor, along with the uh, required Tube client software to interface with the Tube host on the BBC to talk to the hardware, um, and also an API to allow RISC-V software to run um, on that processor. So what we're going to do here today is take the ARM assembly version written in BBC Basic and convert it to RISC-V assembler. Now the version I'm going to convert isn't the version we ended up with at the end of the uh, ARM video, but instead it's made up of uh, versions of uh, bits of code that we wrote as uh, we went through that video. Um, and the reason for that is I wanted the uh, code to be as similar as possible to the RISC-V that we're going to end up with here. Um, so for example, the bit of code that uh, sets up the screen mode colors and defines the characters, that's the final version that stores the start address and the end address in two registers, prints the character at the start address and then post increments the, that address by one to go on to the next character. Um, the bit that seeds the random number generator gets the system timer and then stores the um, random number in one 32-bit register overspilling one byte into another register, that again is the final version. But the main loop, um, we don't make use of any conditional execution features um, because they're not on the RISC-V processor and we also don't make use of the reverse subtract instruction because again that's not available on the RISC-V uh, processor. And finally the random number generator function itself, um, that's the version from the ARM evaluation kit manual, um, so it's the version that's optimized for the ARM processor. So we need to get this over to uh, RISC-V BASIC, which is a version of Richard Russell's BBC BASIC for SDL, ported to the RISC-V by David Banks. Now BBC BASIC for SDL doesn't tokenize programs in the same way as the legacy ACORN versions and cannot save or load them in that format either. But it can, however, load in text-based versions of uh, BASIC programs from the uh, legacy ACORN versions. And we can save those out in the ARM version um, by just using the text save command. So I can do that, save it to the file server, um, then I can switch over to the uh, RISC-V code processor type, number 23, press break, um, and then I can start up RISC-V BASIC, which will get loaded up off the file server. And it takes a little while um, because the uh, RISC-V version of BASIC is a little bit bigger than uh, the ARM version. But once it has loaded up, um, we can load in the uh, text program that we just saved. Um, that'll load in from the file server, and there's all the code um, loaded in. Okay, so for fun, let's just try running the program and see what happens. And um, we get a syntax error on line 90, which is not unexpected. Um, but what maybe is unexpected is that it's not actually an ARM assembly instruction, um, but in fact a comment from the assembler. And the reason for this is BBC Basic for SDL's assembly uses leading semicolons for comments and not backslashes. So as we convert the code, we'll also need to convert the um, comments into that format too. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at converting the code. Um, but the first thing we need to do before we uh, convert any instructions is uh, make sure that the uh, start of the program is aligned on a 32-bit boundary because the RISC-V specification requires this. Now ARM also requires this, um, but the DIM statement in the ARM BASIC we used makes sure that it always allocates a block that uh, is aligned with the start on a 32-bit boundary, but the, the DIM statement in uh, BBC BASIC for SDL doesn't do this. So instead we need to tell the assembler to make Make sure that the next instruction it assembles will sit on that boundary. Um, so we do that by using the align instruction, um, which we need to follow up with uh, a label that we can use to represent whatever the first address of the code is, uh, is going to be when we run it. So we'll, I'll use star for that. Right, so the next thing we need to do is convert the uh, comments on lines 80 and 90 um, to use a leading semicolon. And you can see I don't actually have a, a sort of decent screen editor here, um, so I'm having to do everything using the built-in line editor that uh, dates back to the early days of the BBC Micro. Moving on to line 100, um, we need to load the address of VDU set and VDU set end into a couple of registers, and the instruction we use to load an address is LA, load address. 
Um, and then as for registers, uh, the RISC-V processor has 32 of them, which are numbered X0 to X31, although X0 is always hardwired to the value 0. Now I can use those names, um, but all the registers also have aliases which represent how each one is conventionally used. Um, so register X8 is also known as register S0, and the S stands for saved, and that's a register that um, will not be overwritten by convention when you call a subroutine. So typically a subroutine won't use this register, or if it does it will have to save it and put it back, and the caller can expect that it's preserved when it does call a subroutine. So I'm going to use that register to hold VDU set, and I'm going to use register S1 to use VDU set uh, to store VDU set end. Moving on to line 120, um, we need to load a register with the byte that's uh, pointed to by the first register, and we do that with LB, load byte, and we want to store that uh, byte in register A0, and the A here stands for argument 0, and this is uh, an alias for register X10, um, and an argument register is one used to pass a parameter to a subroutine or receive a return value from it, and I want to um, load A0 with whatever byte is pointed to by um, the address in S0. Then what we want to do is call the operating system function to write a character, which uh, in this case writes the character that's stored in A0, and we need to tell it what, um, uh, what operating system function we want to call, and we do that by loading um, a value into register A7 of the operating system function number, and we do that with load immediate A7, and load immediate loads a value directly in, not pointing at an address or anything, and we tell it what value we want to load, and this is the um, identifier for the operating system write character function, and then we use eCall to actually call the operating system function. Now that will work, um, except that uh, the MOS API defined by David Banks doesn't um, trample on the A7 uh, register when it's called and returned, so we can just get away with setting it once. So what I'm going to do is just do that, and then at line 105 I'm going to do the load immediate uh, to just set that uh, value of operating system right character once. Um, slight optimization, probably not necessary, but there we go. Um, of course we haven't told it what OS right character actually is, so we need to do that up at the start of the program. Um, and that has a value of that, um, which is a kind of arbitrary value defined uh, by David Banks. Now, then we move on to line 130, where we do the comparison and the branch, but you'll also notice we haven't increased S0 here, which was something we did use in the post increment function in ARM assembler. So instead we need to do that explicitly here, and we do that using the add instruction, and we want to add an immediate value, a direct um, value onto a register, and we say, store the result in S0, what is in S0, I want to add one to it. Then when it comes to the compare and branch, um, on the RISC-V, these are not done as two separate instructions. The um, RISC-V doesn't have any sort of condition code registers you sort of explicitly set. Instead, the test uh, and the branch is all done using one instruction. So we do that with branch if not equal, S0, S1, um, going back to loop. So let's uh, clear the screen and uh, have a look at what we've ended up with. So comparing that with the ARM code, we've ended up with something that's uh, very similar. Um, we've had to spend a couple of extra instructions because we've had to um, set the uh, operating system function number explicitly using this load immediate and then trigger the call with eCall rather than getting the whole thing out of the way with one SWI. And we also haven't got the uh, post increment as part of the load and had to do that explicitly using the add I instruction afterwards. But we have managed to save an instruction um, because the branch if not equal allows us to do the comparison and the jump all in one uh, piece of code. So let's have a look at the next bit, um, which is the random number seeding bit. Right, so the first thing we need to do is convert this backslash uh, at line uh, 150 um, over to a semicolon as it's a comment, and then we move on to line 160 where we're retrieving the uh, system interval timer using osword subfunction 1. Um, so this is pretty easy to convert, we load immediate a0 with the subfunction number 1, um, and then we load in the address um, where we want to store the result. Um, in A1. Then what we do is load in the A7 register with the um, operating system function we want to call, osword, like we did with OS right character, and then we call the operating system with eCall. Um, and we obviously need to store um, the operating system identifier for the osword function up uh, at the top of the code as well, like we did before. Now line 170, we're loading in a register with a, a 
um, a value stored at an address. Now, on the LDR instruction on the ARM, um, you can load a register with an address explicitly like this, but on the uh, RISC-V you can't do this. Um, instead, what you need to do is first load a register with the address you want to uh, access, and then you can load in another register with the, um, the, the data stored at that address. So what we need to do is load address, I'm going to use register T0, and that's temporary 0, and this is a register that uh, isn't guaranteed to be preserved when you call a, a subroutine. Um, so it's a good place to just store things temporarily, as the name implies. Um, and we're going to load T0 with run buff. Then what we're going to do is um, load in a word, and that's a 32-bit word, into register S4, which is the register I'm going to use to store the random number. Um, I'm going to load in what's at address T0. Um, and then what we need to do is load that byte with it uh, uh, offset uh, plus 4 of uh, run buff. So we do that with load byte. S5, and then you do the indexed addressing like that. So that means load the byte at address T0 plus 4 into register S5. Now I could do that, um, but actually the random number algorithm I'm going to use only requires 32 bits, so I can effectively throw away this, which is the most significant part of the, um, of the timer value. So let's have a look at the next bit. Right, so next thing we need to do is uh, convert this comment on line 190 um, to remind myself what uh, registers I'm storing each uh, uh, variable in. Um, and I'm just going to map R1, 2, and 3 to uh, S1, 2, and 3 for this. Next thing, 200, we load um, whatever register is holding B, which in this case is S1, um, with the uh, value 0. Then 220, we're doing an exclusive OR with an immediate value, so S1, S1, 128. Uh, line 230, we've just got to convert the uh, format for this comment. Line 240, we need to load immediate value um, 40 into whatever register is holding Y. Um, 260, we need to do this um, exclusive OR, I'm just going to copy that from above. Uh, 270, um, we need to do a comment, convert that to a semicolon, and then 280 we're calling a subroutine and we do that with jump and link, run 0, and then we're doing an AND with an immediate value, S3, S4, 1. Um, so that's that bit. Right, let's move on to the next bit. Right, so the next thing to do is to convert this comment on line 290 to have a leading semicolon instead of a backslash. And then I've got a bunch of lines where I'm calling the operating system write character function. Um, and in the same way in the loop above where I got away with setting uh, the A7 register with that function number once right at the start, um, I'm going to do the same thing here and just on line 295 load immediate A7 operating system write character. So now we can convert each line. So this one, load immediate, A0, number 17, print the character. Line 310, load immediate, A730, then do a subtract. Now because the final operand here is a register and not an immediate, you don't want an I after the sub, and that often catches me out. I often forget it or include it when I don't mean to. But I want to store the result in A0, I want to take A0 and subtract S1, print the character. Line 320 is the same as uh, line 300. Um, 330. Now on the arm here we uh, can use the barrel shifter to do the addition and the, the shift all in one instruction uh, but you can't do that in RISC-V, you need to split them out into two separate instructions. So I'm going to do the shift of R3 or in this case S3 first and then I'm going to add R1 or S1 onto it in a moment. So I'm going to start with shift left logical immediate and the immediate is because the number of bits I'm shifting by is, uh, is an immediate value not stored in a register. I want to store the result in A0, the thing I want to shift is S3 and I want to shift it by one bit to the left. Then what I'm going to do is uh, add on um, into A0, I'm going to take A0, I'm going to add on S1 and then I need to add on immediate value A0, A0 and 1 and then I'm going to call uh, the operating system function to print the character. Line 340, um, we need to do the print, just, well, just need to update the comment saying we're going to do the print, I'm going to change that to a semicolon. Line 350, load immediate, A0, 241, then subtract A0, um, A0, S3, print the character. So, and then we move on to the final bit of the main loop. So next we just need to convert this comment on line 360. 
Uh, and then line 370 we need to subtract uh, the immediate value 1 from uh, whatever holds y, so that's going to be subtract immediate s2, s2 and 1, uh, except it isn't because there rather oddly isn't a subtract immediate instruction, instead there's only an add immediate. So if you want to subtract a number, uh, an immediate number, you need to add together the negative version of that number. And I find this uh, rather strange because the risk 5 is full of uh, lots of pseudo instructions. It just seems rather odd that they never added a subtract uh, immediate instruction that does the negative conversion for you. But anyway, there you go. Um, so now we need to do the branch if not equal, S2 to 0. And this is where the magic register X0 that is always the value 0 comes in. We can refer to it by its alias of the word 0. And if we're not equal to 0, we want to jump back to row loop. And then 380, we want the unconditional branch back to main loop. So that's the end of the main loop. And we move on to the uh, random number generator. So what we've got here is the linear feedback shift register uh, function that I got from the ARM evaluation kit manual, and that's quite heavily tuned to run efficiently on the ARM processor. So I thought rather than convert this, there's probably a better algorithm to use um, natively on the RISC-V. Um, and I went looking for one to save me having to, to write one myself, but uh, I didn't find one. But what I did find instead was a, a lab exercise for UC Berkeley on uh, writing a linear feedback shift register function on the RISC-V. And it didn't give you the code, but it did tell you the algorithm and then the, the lab exercise size was actually to write the code that implemented the algorithm. So that's what I'm going to do here. So hopefully no one will steal this code and use it as the answer to their lab exercise. But um, even if they do, I'd advise against it because there's probably a mistake in here somewhere. So the first thing I need to do is update this comment to remind us what uh, registers we're using. And I'm only using one register S4 with run buff in. Um, I am also using T0, but that's just to hold a value temporarily, which is exactly what the T registers are for. So I don't really feel the need to document that. Um, now the algorithm itself, um, that works by XORing together various uh, bits from the uh, source 32-bit value and you'll end up with at the end um, the result of that which then gets sort of uh, slotted onto the left hand side uh, in the most significant bit of the um, result um, and then all the remaining bits in the, um, uh, in the 32-bit value are then rotated. Now that's slightly interesting because the RISC-V doesn't actually have a rotate instruction. So instead, when you want to do a rotate, um, what you need to do is uh, use two shifts. So you start by shifting one half of the, um, uh, the number to the left, and then you shift the other half to the right, and then you use AND to mask things off, and then um, use OR to join the two halves back together again, and then you get your result. Um, so I hope I've implemented that correctly, but it doesn't really matter if I've got it wrong, because the output of this function seems to be random anyway, um, so it's doing what I need it to do anyway. Um, and you return from a subroutine in RISC-V using the RET instruction, which actually uh, does a similar thing to the ARM where it moves a link register into the program counter. It's just handled via a pseudo instruction called RET. So let's just have a look at the uh, whole program. Right, so a couple of final things we need to do. I um, just need to uh, update this uh, print statement at the end because we're no longer assembling ARM code. Um, and also the addresses of the code are different. Um, the start is not the start of the buffer we allocated, but the aligned first uh, first address. Um, and the uh, size of the code is the end address minus that start address rather than the start of the buffer. Um, and also line 10, where we store the file name of the program. Um, I'll just update that to be RISC-V, and we need to save the program. Um, I need to specify the file name explicitly because BBC Basic for SDL doesn't use that shortcut where it looks for a file name with rem and an angle bracket. Right, so moment of truth, let's uh, run the program and see if it assembles, um, which it does. Um, and let's try running the code with call start. And there we go, that's a 3D10 print, but uh, written in RISC-V assembler. Right, so the only thing left is just to uh, compare the size of the code. Um, so the uh, RISC-V version assembles to 259 bytes, which is 80 more than the uh, ARM version, so that uh, corresponds to 20 instructions, because um, each one's four bytes long. So it's a fair bit bigger, like another 50% or so. Um, if you liked any of the code um, in this series, then it's all available on a GitHub repository. And if you haven't tried the latest version of PyTube Direct, the Indigo release, um, please give that a go and test it out and report any bugs to Dave, because I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Um, so anything left is to say thanks for watching, and I hope you found that interesting and maybe even useful, and see you next time.